Every couple of years, I switch back and forth between Android and iOS. I've done it pretty much since Android and iOS became a thing. And I do this because I like keeping track of how these two platforms are advancing. You know, it used to be that iOS was miles ahead of Android, and Android was kind of... It was mundane, I would say. It was relatively far behind. And even at my last Switch back in 2018, it felt that way to me. The iOS, in terms of software and hardware, was still fairly far ahead of Android in terms of app availability, app design, iOS design, and definitely hardware. And I felt that way, and I think I could have, at that point, made very good arguments that I was right. It didn't mean at that point that Android didn't have cool features and that I didn't that I hated Android or anything. It's just that I at that point thought that iOS was still the better operating system of the two. Now, fast forward to 2021, I switched from Android back to iOS. I've been using an uh OnePlus 7 for the last 3 years or so or I think I actually had a 6 before this. I don't even remember. It's been a while. I switched a couple times on Android during the three years. But just recently, I picked up an iPhone 11 Pro. And I always do this. I never buy the most recent version of any of the phones. I just don't. Mainly for the reasons why. Because if you want the big iPhone, it's like $1,400. I mean, in order to get any reasonable amount of storage. It's the stupidest thing ever. But that's beside the point. I was expecting with a Switch to find that iOS had advanced so far ahead of Android because it's been three years. I figured there have been some advances in iOS that would have allowed it to keep its lead that I at least perceived that it had three years ago. And color me surprised that that's not what happened because there are a few areas that I really thought that the iOS was leading on. App design, app availability, screen responsiveness... Not necessarily refresh rate, but just the feel of how when you scroll something, it actually feels like you're scrolling something. On Android, at least in the past, it felt like it was always just a millimeter of a second behind, you know? I know that's not a real measurement, whatever. Uh, <laughs> it always felt that way. It just felt slower. Even once they moved to higher refresh rate screens, I never really noticed it. My perception has never been that great for that kind of thing, so... Uh, you know, I didn't really notice that, but I figured that at least iOS had maintained that lead because that was one of the things that iOS has always been really good at, fluidity of touch screen of their touch screens. That's not the case anymore. Uh, another thing that I, iOS used to be ahead of Android on was app availability and app design. The apps on Android used to be kind of bad. I mean, don't get me wrong, there's still plenty of just shit apps on the Google Play Store, but it used to be that all the apps are just bad. If you had two apps that were exactly the same uh, by the same developer, and they were supposed to, you know, like uh, Facebook or Instagram or whatever, the iOS version was almost always going to be better than the Android version, for whatever reason. iOS always got the updates first for, for new features and new designs and stuff. And while that still kind of happens to this day, the differences between the apps aren't actually in iOS's favor anymore, at least not across the board like they used to be. So I was really surprised because it feels like in the last three years, Android has moved forward, whereas iOS has really seriously kind of, I wouldn't say it's regressed, but it has definitely stayed where it was three years ago. Now, yes, there's widgets. I don't give a damn about widgets. I don't use widgets all that much on the Android platform, and they've had them since the beginning. So widgets don't do anything for me. And even if we're going to talk about widgets for a little while, which we're not going to, the design of the widgets on iOS are, are is bad. I mean, there's so much unused space on those widgets for the most part. Like the what the weather widget has like it uses half the space in a in the two by two grid, and the other half is just empty color. I mean, who designs this shit? Like I'm not a designer. I mean, that's just poor design. Center that shit. Anyways, <laughs> and rant on the widgets. So, I was really surprised, like I was saying, that it doesn't feel like iOS has moved forward at all in the last three years since I left it behind the last time. 
And it was really surprising to me because I had expected them to keep that lead, to keep innovating to the point where they were always just slightly ahead of Android in terms of all these things that I, you know, enjoyed about iOS. And it really hasn't. Now, it's possible that they have, you know, moved forward a little bit, but Android has seemed to have moved forward faster. And there are several things on Android, now that I've switched from iOS, that I'm going to miss. The back button. Now, the back button has always been shit on iOS. It's been mostly non-existent, honestly. And they add, now they've added, and I believe they had added this before I switched last time, but in some applications, when you move from one application to another, you can get a little back button up at the top, and it's like really, really little, and sometimes it's there, sometimes it's not there, but that's not the back button that I enjoy. Because, like, for example, if you watch a YouTube video on your phone and you get it to rotate so it's, you know, this way, you know, the way you'd want to watch a, vo a video, you can't hit a back button to get out of it. You have to hit the little, uh, like, square thing that YouTube gives you in order to take it back into the full screen and then you can close the, the video or go to the next video or whatever. That's just piss poor design. And that's not even just YouTube. That's pretty much any video that you have. There's no true back button and way to get out of it. Now, and on Android, even once they got rid of the back button, which they did, they introduced back gestures. So you could go through and swipe back, you know, from the side of the screen. And while uh, Apple has that in some applications where you're, if you're in like a vertical application, you can go through and swipe back and forth between the, the screens. That's okay. It's still not universal. It's not every place that it needs to be. And it's really weird. And it's drives me bonkers. Now, this OnePlus 7 that I had has a 90 hertz refresh rate. And I said earlier that I couldn't really tell the difference. Well, I couldn't really tell the difference until I got to the iPhone. I do notice the difference when because this is back to 60 hertz. And while it doesn't really bother me, there are periods where it feels like this phone isn't as responsive as that one is. And it's weird because this one is at least a little bit newer than that one was. So uh, the touch responsiveness that I used to enjoy and find so fascinating on iOS, where you could, you know, touch the screen and watch it go back and forth in exact time with your finger, doesn't necessarily seem to be there anymore. It doesn't seem to, maybe it's just not as impressive, or maybe it's because Android has caught up to the point where it feels the same. It's just not as something that catch, has caught my eye like it used to. And then we talked a little bit about the apps. The thing about apps on Android is that they've gotten, for the most part, way better. Now, there are still a bunch of junk apps out there that will bombard you with that, with ads and all this stuff. That happens on both platforms, by the way. It's not an Android or an iOS problem. And it used to be that the at least the ads on iOS seemed to be a little bit better designed. That's not the case anymore. Now they're just as annoying on both platforms. Uh, but for the main apps, like Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, clients, and things like that, it used to be that iOS had a selection of vastly superior applications, and the apps on Android were either abandoned or they all uh, looked like they were designed for ice cream sandwich or, you know, any number of problems. Now, there. Are, let's just take a Twitter app for example. The Twitter app on Android and I, that I use on Android and the Twitter app that I prefer on iOS, they're both equally good. And that was a really big shock to me because it didn't used to be that way. And the But the difference now is that developers on iOS have gotten so good at wheedling out a little bit of money from you through in-app purchases that almost every single application has an in-app purchase for you. And while that's true on Android as well, for the most part, if you use an app on Android, you can use the app for free. If it, you know, and then... The in-app purchases will add, will take away the ads, or they will add a couple extra features, will allow you to theme it or whatever. And some of the apps on iOS are that way too, but some of them have fully gone into removing actual features that that are essential for the app's functionality, and they've moved those behind a paywall, behind an in-app purchase. For example, the Tweetbot thing, the Tweetbot application, which is a Twitter client, is the best designed Twitter client on iOS, and it has been for a long time. And I, when I moved away from it last time, I really missed it, because there is not a, or at least at that point, there wasn't a Twitter client on Android that was 
as well designed as Tweetbot. And there used to be a, pay, uh, a free version and a paid version. I always, you know, like 10 bucks or whatever for a Twitter client. It's stupid to pay $10 for a Twitter client. I understand that. I, like, I'm, I'm well aware that, you know, paying money for a Twitter client when you can just use the free Twitter client is stupid. But, you know, I enjoy supporting third-party developers. Anyways, the, the new way they do the Twitter client now with Tweetbot is that they give you a regular version, but you can't tweet from it, and you can't retweet from it, and you can't reply from it, and you can't do anything from it, at least as far as I could tell. And uh, in order to do that, you had to pay for the app. Now, it wouldn't have been a big deal if it was just, you know, five or ten bucks, whatever. But it seems to me that every single app like that has moved to a subscription model. And I am not going to pay... Uh, $10 a month or $10 every other month or whatever it was uh, for a Twitter client. I'm just not. So what I ended up doing was actually spending, uh, uh, I think it was like 20 bucks on a different Twitter app that's just as good, and that gives me a lifetime you know, access to it. It was still way too much for a Twitter client, but I use Twitter on my phone all the time. That's where I do most of my Twittering. So that was my biggest experience with applications on iOS is that they've all moved to the stupid subscription model. And, you know, I think I'll eventually do a video on subscriptions in the, in the future because I have plenty to rant about there as well. But in terms of applications, you know, in the open source world, I've made a couple of videos about how uh, open source developers can make money because obviously open source developers need to make money. And one of my suggestions was a subscription model, because everybody seems to enjoy the subscription model these days. I don't know why, but it seems to be something that people are willing to put up with. And even I was at that you know point. I, I pay for Netflix and all this other stuff, just like everybody else does. And uh, But this has kind of changed my mind, because not everything needs a subscription model. Like, just, it's a Twitter client. Let me pay you $10, you know... Even if that seems too high, let me just pay you some money, and I can use your Twitter client until the next version comes out. You know, fine. <laughs> but at least then I could choose to use the old version for a little while if I wanted to not upgrade to the next one. That would, you know, the, the subscription model on iOS just is, is completely blowing my mind because it's every application. It's the Twitter client. It's the uh, the weather uh, app that I, I mean, the AccuWeather on iOS is completely different than the AccuWeather on Android. And that the ads on the iOS are actually way more annoying, so I couldn't put up with it. So I ended up having to, you know, shout out somebody to get rid of the ads or find a different, you know, weather client. And because the stock weather app on iOS doesn't have a radar, and you know, for whatever reason. Anyways, I've switched to iOS, and I, I keep going on about the negative things, but there is one area where Apple has kept their lead over Android, and that is in hardware. This iPhone 11 Pro, which is, you know, a couple years old at this point, I mean, is far and away the best hardware I've used on any device. It's so good. Uh, it does feel, when you take it out of, when I take this out of the case, it feels more fragile uh, than, like, my OnePlus 7. But I think that that's psychological because I paid so much more money for this than I paid for the OnePlus 7. Almost double. Uh, I, <laughs> even though it's a couple years old. Uh, phones are just way too expensive these days. But in the hand, it feels more substantial. That's the way Apple hardware always has been. It always has felt more substantial than any of the Android phones that I've ever used. Most of the Android phones I used to use, at least were you know, all plastic. At least they've moved to glass slabs these days. But even this OnePlus 7, it's way lighter, right? And it feels lighter. I mean, I'm, I'm picking these both up and there's... like It feels like there's like a half a pound difference in these things. It's, it's ridiculous. And they have the same basically the same size screen it's really weird so i enjoy the hardware way more on the apple side of things but the software is uh not as impressive as it used to be it's definitely feeling very long in the tooth and the subscription model and all the applications really pisses me off and i miss the back button yeah i miss the back button a lot uh, like the actual or the Maybe not even the back button, but the back gestures that, that Android has now. I love those things. Those are great because you can use them everywhere. It didn't matter where you were. You could use them in every single application, and they were just there. They're not the hit or miss bullshit that, it, that Apple has. Okay, so that is it for uh, this video. If you want to uh, bitch about Android or iOS in the comments below, I'd really appreciate that because I'll get right in there with you. 
Make sure you like and subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter at the LinuxCast. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash LinuxCast. Before I go, I'd like to take a moment to thank my current patrons. Devon, Chris, East Coast Web, Gen 2 is fun too. Marcus, Meglin, Sven, Jackson, Knife and Tool, Joshua Lee, Mitchell, Arch Center, American Camp. Thanks to everybody for watching. I'll see you next time.